know, now working with the US Air Force, yeah. introducing continuous delivery there. That sounds, that would surprise lots of people <laughs> and sounds difficult. So tell us a little bit about the, you know, are, are, is it the same challenges? Are there different challenges? Are you, you know, are there other things? What have you learned from this experience? Uh, well, I've learned that the Department of Defense, um, you know, they, they have applied, um, they have the thing called an authority to operate that you'll hear about. And this is a, a long process of certifying that your thing meets all the security and compliance standards required. And you get this authority to operate and you're good until they have another review in two or three years. Now that might work for a, a skiff, you know, like a, a, you know, a secure building, you know, that doesn't change very often. It's completely uh, irrelevant when it comes to software delivery. Um, it's that whole mindset of we're going to build it and then we're going to make sure it's good and then we're going to deliver it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm going to do that multiple times a day. That doesn't work. Now, the uh, you know platform one. Uh, you know, one of the things they have is they have the continuous authority to operate where the goal is to bake the certification into the pipelines, mm -hmm. right? And that's, a, that's, you know, this game changer thing. But then of course the, the uh, you know, the question is, is how, how much of that can we really bake in? Some things require uh, knowledge that can't be automated. And so how do we front load that versus that being an inspection at the end? You know, and so there's, it's, you know, there's honestly, other than the fact that you're trying to change a larger, more entrenched bureaucracy than exists in a company like Walmart, yeah. the challenges are very much the same. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just overcoming the larger external bureaucracy and selling, you know, just explaining to them how their current processes, again, are theatrics. They don't apply to, to product development and software uh, because change happens too quickly. And in fact, it's dangerous because you've got this two or three year license to be insecure where mm -hmm. I don't have to go and get you to check anything uh, after that. You just assuming that I'm gonna have security after that. Uh, also, you know, with software, I can have something that's secure today, make no changes, it's insecure tomorrow, and I have yeah. to be able to deploy a change to fix that. If you're not doing CD, you cannot be secure. It's not possible to be secure without continuous delivery. Mm -hmm. Any attempt other than that is complete fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, so there's some, some great, uh, there's a group of people that did, uh, It's called, I think it's called the Rugged Manifesto that mm. came across my uh, event horizon at some point a few years ago and one of the things that they pointed out that really resonated with me was that um was that the the, the attack surface area that that bad people try to exploit in you know in most software is is kind of almost eliminated if you don't run any software that's more than eight months old so if you can keep your software up to date, you kind of eliminate so 95% of the t attack surface area of your software. So keep your yeah. operating system up to date, keep your language up to date, you know, keep your infrastructure up to date. And as you say, continuous delivery makes that no brainer. It's easy. But without it, that's difficult. There are, there are few organizations that I've ever seen that will even think about upgrading you know, the version of C Sharp or Java that they're running you know, it, well, once I the think, thing's built, you know, that's because that's such a big deal if you're not running continuous delivery. Well, and, and you know, we, we can talk about a, a tip that I'd like to just stick in everyone's mind. You know, when we were doing this uh, pilot at Walmart, I had a, a, a dependency, an API dependency on, you know, the partner team. That API wasn't changing very frequently. We'd stabilized it and we were building out other things. It was a, a node application that was wrapping, you know, with a, a C++ interface to the legacy software that was, you mm -hmm. know, C, right? And we needed a property added for a new feature. It's take a day or two tops to add the property all the way through the stack and expose it to us. It actually took uh, two or three weeks because they, uh, when they ran their pipeline, they found out one of the dependencies had been blacklisted with a security issue. Yeah. They had to upgrade that dependency, and the next upgrade was a breaking API change of the dependency. So it took them two or three weeks to refactor the code to use the dependency. 
Yeah. And, you know, the, uh, the postmortem from that is we started running scheduled builds on all of our pipelines every week, whether or not anything changed or not. Yeah. And if you don't have any sort of, uh, you know, uh, production level scanning for, for your dependencies for CVEs, you yeah. know, or even if you do, don't just let a pipeline stagnate. You know, I've got yeah. a dashboard now that'll tell me if I have a pipeline has been running a week. Yeah. It's critical. Run your pipelines all the time. Yeah. Oh, but I don't want to redeploy. Why not? You're just yeah. redeploying. You're just validating your pipeline still works. Keep pipelines green. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and, and that gets back to the, the what I increasingly think of the, the real fundamental value of continuous delivery or the fundamental tenet of continuous delivery, which is make change in small steps. You know, it's, if you're if you're running if you're running your pipeline frequently, then the the delta between you know now and the future is small, and you yeah. know, what, what, whatever's in that delta, it's smaller than if you wait longer. So you know, and, and that has a big impact. Yeah, I, 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 it changes your mindset. You know, I used to be uh, okay with you know two months worth of change. Well, not okay, but I mean, it didn't terrify me. Now, uh, you know, when we started that pilot, they actually put the brakes on us in logistics because another team had a failure in production. So they put the brakes on everybody. Yeah. And on on day five of looking at the amount of change my team was making that was not deploying, I, I started escalating to the senior director about the mm -hmm. level of risk he was incurring by not letting a ship. Yeah. And convinced them to let a ship to reduce the risk. Yeah. And, and and so and so, uh, in 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 the, the air force on with the platform on stuff. Are you are you are you seeing any progress? Are, are things are things moving forwards in the way that you want? Uh, I mean, it's it's like anything else in, in, in any change. There's fits and starts. Yeah, there's progress. There's more and more people talking about it. Uh, the the idea of CD is getting more traction more broadly in the DoD. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think this is a, a critical national asset that we mm -hmm. have these capabilities and we keep driving them that I, I know speaking as an American that we have adversaries who don't like us very much. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that their systems of government where it matters on things like this have less bureaucracy than ours do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that bureaucracy, uh, while it can it, in some cases be a benefit in cases like this it's uh, dangerous you don't see that level of bureaucracy when there's a shooting war for yeah. good reasons yeah 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 and and you know as a an outside observer um it seems to me that you know the american government in in this is a stupid thing to say already. The American, I was, going to, I was going to say the American government in general seem to be taking some of this stuff ser seriously. But I am seeing pockets of people talking about different things. There was, there was I've forgotten his name. There was a, a gentleman at the um, Department of Homeland Security that was pushing continuous delivery quite hard a, a few years ago. And there were some articles that I read about doing, you know, regular, frequent, small, small batch deployments to fighter jets. Uh, and so on for, 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 yeah, for actually, some systems. Uh, platform one, um, you know, they, they delivered to a U2 in flight with the platform. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's, that's kind of cool. Um, that was, yeah. you know, a while back, but yeah, there's, there's more people coming in from industry trying to help the, you know, the new CIO, well, relatively new CIO to the Navy um, has been, has pushing these same concepts. It's yeah. just, you know, there are huge bureaucracies to adjust and you know, there's a lot of education required to get it done. Thank you.